Lovely to welcome this morning Reverend Sarah Ramsden, who is going to lead us in worship. So thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. It's a joy to be here this morning on this first Sunday of Advent 2024. Can you believe it's a year since last Advent? Um, Here we are, um, standing at the beginning of our Advent season, our season of waiting. I'm padding a little because um, the people who are doing our Advent wreath this morning have not yet arrived. Um, It's Chris, uh, Olympia and Sienna who are going to light our candle for us. Um, And we think they may have been held up by the traffic because, you know, it's um, horrendous on the high street this morning. So um, just hoping that they might arrive. Oh, oh, thumbs up from Paul. (laughs) So they'll be they'll be coming very soon. Um, If you want to turn to your news sheets, which you should have, um, and you'll find the words that we're going to listen to and say ourselves as Um, Chris and Olympia and Sienna lead us in our Advent um, wreath words. So they're going to be coming very soon. Um, I'll just point out this as well. Um, You should all have got one of these. This is the Methodist Church's Advent, um, shall we call it a campaign? Um, Or it's a, a, a thing to hand out to people. Um, and it gives us um, some theme for our Advent worship. Um, it says, hush the noise, join the love song this Christmas. And you know the, the phrase, hush the noise, is from the carol, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Um, and we are being encouraged this year to, to try and hush the noise in our lives and to think about that first Christmas and the the love song which the angels sang as Jesus was born, the love song which God brings to us. So I would encourage you, as it says in the news sheet, um, if you can access the internet, to, uh, to use this link, and you can see all of the resources that there are there for us to use du- during this season as we come to God and prepare ourselves for Christmas. So, with that all said, I'm going to invite Chris and Olympia and Sienna, if she's happy to, to come and light our Advent wreath, the first candle on our wreath this morning. Thank you. Dawns with lights strung high and music everywhere. Sights and smells abound around, senses assaulted and confused. Oh, hush the noise. Amid the lists and cards and gifts, amid the pleas, and pleas can we, amid the chaos of the world, oh, hush the noise. Let's hear the angels sing. Let's Let's seek seek and see. see. And, and seek, seek to, to hear, hear. Let's and seek, seek to feel, and, and seek to know. Let's seek to find peace and love. Oh, oh hush the noise. Let's hear the, the angels sing. Right, do we have some um, combustibles? Yeah. <laughs> there you, go. you know how clumsy I am. I better let him do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris and Olympia and Sienna, for doing that important job for us this morning. Um, I'm taken with the words, amid the chaos of the world. Um, certainly for me, the world has felt a bit chaotic this morning and over the last few days. Um, and I think it felt chaotic on the high street as well. Um, so it's quite apt, really, that we should um, hear those words. But now... We settle ourselves, we hush the noise, and we listen to the angels sing. We listen to God's love song to each one of us this morning. So let's sing our first hymn, number 180, if you're following in the books or on the screen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. 180.
So now, let us pray. Advent, the season of waiting. God, we come to you in our waiting. We wait with our fears, our anxieties and frustrations, our pains and regrets, our shame and confusion. God, help us to wait in peace. We wait with impatience. We rush around, preparing for the festivities. Not leaving the space to prepare our hearts. God, help us to wait in faith. We wait in excitement. We are ready to celebrate. We know the story with its humbleness, simplicity, and wonder. God, help us to nurture our joy. We wait in thanksgiving. We are free and able to celebrate. We have others around us to share in the journey. We are able to wonder in the marvel of your gift. God, help us to receive your love. Amen. Some words from our Old Testament readings for today, for this first Sunday in Advent. First of all, from Psalm 25. And then from Jeremiah chapter 33. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from old. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Words of hope 
and dedication as we wait once more to celebrate Christ's coming to us as a baby, as we look forward to the time when Christ will come again in glory to our world. So we sing a hymn which looks forward to that time when Jesus will return again. It's number 177. Lo, he comes with clouds descending, once for favoured sinners slain. Alleluia, God appears on earth to reign. 177. Ian to come and read our two New Testament readings for us. Thank you, Ian. The first reading is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 3, reading verses 9 to 13. 
How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father, when Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. And the second reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 25 to 31. <clears throat> There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Thank you, Ian, for bringing God's word to us this morning. Shall we pray? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How are you doing? Coping? Yes? Yes? Did the, did the traffic push you over the edge this morning? Yes? Yes? Yeah? It doesn't take much at this time of year, does it? Um, when you're, you're trying to keep it all together and one thing goes wrong and then it's all... Yes. I just thought I'd ask, because I, 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 I can feel it in myself... And I could sense it maybe in a few people this morning as well. Well, we started our service this morning with the opening liturgy provided for us on the Methodist Church website. And I'll say again, um, please do um, use the link in your uh, notice sheets if you want to investigate the resources that are available for us further. This year's Advent Wreath Words and the theme for our worship as we move through this season of Advent are based around those words from the well-known carol, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. The phrase of the carol which we are focusing on is, Hush the noise. Hush the noise. I read to you some of the introductory words from the resources. Christmas is loud. So much expectation, so many voices telling us how to celebrate, what to wear, what to eat and drink, what to buy, what to watch. Yeah, Christmas radio times will be along shortly, I would think. Instead, this Christmas, the Methodist Church is inviting everyone to hush the noise, to listen for the love song which the angels bring this and every year. They sang it for the first time more than 2,000 years ago on that midnight clear. They're just waiting for us to join in. Some of those words are on the, the back of your postcard that you got this morning. So we've once again arrived at the first Sunday in Advent. The season in the church year when we are called to watch and wait. 
to remember the love that God offered to us in sending Jesus to be with us in flesh and bone, thought and feeling, with us in happiness and sadness, feeling what we feel, standing where we stand, understanding what it is to, to be human, our glory and also our frailty. We might have only just arrived at Advent in the church. In the shops, it's been Christmas for weeks now. It can be very easy to feel totally overwhelmed by all of the busyness. We can feel equally overwhelmed either by being in all the busyness ourselves or watching others from the sidelines. I was thinking about this all the other day and two different pictures came into my mind, one from childhood, the other for any age. I'm thinking of the feeling when you're on the playground with friends and playing with a big long skipping rope. Can you remember that? Yes, yeah, big, big skipping rope if you have them at, at your school. Two friends are turning the skipping rope at either end and the rest of the group are taking it in turns to run in, skip and run out again, or maybe skip for a few times and then go. Um, you know that you want to join in, but if you want to join in, you'll have to run in at some point and give it a go. But you're worried about the consequences if you choose the wrong moment to run in, to, to skip over the rope. So you stand at the side, rocking backwards and forwards. Can you remember that feeling, thinking? <laughs> you're watching it going up and down, thinking, is it now, is it now? Oh, no. um, and if you're like me, um, when I did move, I usually ended up all tangled up in the, in the rope because I, it, you know, it was a fluke if I managed to actually run in and, and let the, the rope go under my feet rather than round my neck. Um, <laughs> So, but that, that feeling of sort of standing at the side and, and waiting, I was thinking about that in terms of, of Advent and watching, watching all of this going on and thinking, I really ought, I really ought to get, get joining in, but I, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit frightened about this. The second example is usually a little less hazardous, but still requires some thought and coordination to avoid embarrassment. I'm thinking of the moving walkway at the airport, okay? So as you approach the moving walkway, you have to try and judge the speed of the walkway. Um, and as you, you get closer, you have to match your pace of walking so that when you um, step onto it, you step on at just the right speed and you can keep walking all while carrying a suitcase and trying to look like you know what you're doing. Um, there's, there's, um, I don't know if any of you have seen the Billy Connolly sketch where he's talking about the, the, the moving walkway and he said there's people trying to style it out and they're like going like this and, and trying, trying to make it look cool but it's just, it's just not, not working. So Advent... It's a time full of preparation, a time full of expectancy. In the midst of our days, we are called to be a people who watch and wait. We wait to celebrate once more the fact that Jesus came to the earth. We watch and wait for his coming again to the earth, preparing our hearts to accept him and our arms to embrace him when he comes again in glory. Our Bible readings for today can help us as we wait. Conveniently, in sermon terms, they fit under three headings, three actions we can take so that we wait well. And even more conveniently, I've got three H's. Heads up, 
Hearts open, hands joined. Heads up, hearts open, hands joined. In the reading from Luke's Gospel, Jesus talks about the time when he will come again. He says that the time before he comes will be a difficult time. But we as his followers should stand up and raise our heads. Heads up. Sometimes when the journey gets tough and the way gets difficult, it can be easy to let our heads drop, to be looking at the ground, worrying about where to take our next step, wondering if we're going in the right direction at all. If we look up and turn our eyes on Jesus, the one who has walked this way before us, then we have a better chance of walking in the right way and with comfort and love. God loves us with an everlasting love, a love without limits or boundaries. This is a love for every season of our lives, the good times and the bad times, the happy times and the sad times. <coughs> Heads up, hearts open. In our reading from Psalm 25, the writer says, O oh Lord, teach me your paths, lead me in your truth, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. If we wait in a spirit of openness to God, we will discover new things. We will learn more of the incredible faithfulness of the one who made us. God will help us and give us hope. Heads up, hearts open, hands joined. The writer to the Thessalonians says, May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. As we lift our heads up and open our hearts and we are together as a church family, as followers of Christ, to care for one another, to lift one another up in prayer and practical support, to join our hands, to care for one another. So this Advent, I encourage you and myself to have our heads up, our hearts open, and our hands joined as we wait for his coming and his coming again. One last thing about that moving walkway at the airport. The wonderful thing about it is that if you wish, you can stop walking and just let it carry you along for a while. You can gather yourself, get your bearings, and look around. This Advent, in the midst of the busyness, it's okay to stop occasionally and take a look around. It's okay to let yourself be carried along by God's love. God is singing that love song over us. God wants us to hear that love song. Some words from a song by Matt Redmond to finish. 
heaven's perfect melody, the creator's symphony. You are singing over me, the father's song. Heaven's perfect mystery, the king of love has sent for me. And now you're singing over me, the father's song. Heads up, hearts open, hands joined, and listen to the love song of our Creator. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn now. It's number 351. It's a song which talks about all that we have in Jesus, all that Jesus has done for us, and the confidence that we can have in the love of God. It's number 351. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. 351.
So now we come to our prayers for others and for ourselves. Let us pray. In these prayers, when I say the words, come Lord Jesus, would you respond with the same words, come Lord Jesus? In joyful expectation of his coming to reign, we pray to our Lord saying, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus. Come to your world as King of the nations. We pray for this world and all the countries in it, all the nations, all the peoples. We pray for those in authority in each country. That they may understand their responsibility and rule with equity and with compassion. Before you, rulers will stand in silence. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. We pray for our church here in Yarm, for all of our church family, young and old, people who are here, people who can't be here for whatever reason. Help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing to do your will. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your people as saviour and bearer of pain. We pray for all people for whom this season of Advent and Christmas is not a time of joy, but a time of difficulty, a time of pain, a time of tears. Enfold us all in your love and mercy. Wipe away the tears of failure, fear and distress and set us free to serve you forever. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to us from heaven with power and great glory, and lift us up to meet you, where with all your saints and angels we will live with you forever. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please turn with me in your worship books to page 123. And down at the bottom of that page, we find our words for sharing the peace with one another. Page 123. And if you feel able, please stand. May the God of peace make you holy and keep you free from every fault as you wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share that peace with those around us in whatever way we feel comfortable with. We now dedicate our offerings for the work of God in this church and circuit. Thank you. Let us pray. Loving and caring God, we bring to you these gifts of money and we recognise the money which is coming electronically as well, given with love, given with dedication. We ask that you will accept these gifts and ourselves. In Jesus' name, Amen. We continue over onto page 124 for our prayer of thanksgiving. Again, I say if, if it's standing up for too long for you, please feel free to sit down. I don't think God really minds whether you stood up or sat down. So um, feel free, you know, if you, if you need to at any point. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all glory and light of our salvation, we offer our thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. By your living word, you created all things, you called all things into being, breathed into life the desire of your heart, and shaped us in your own likeness. Though we rejected your love, you did not give us up or cease to fashion our salvation. You made a covenant to be our God, spoke to us through the prophets and prepared the way for our redemption. We praise you that in the fullness of time you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, the Lord of eternity, announced by angels and born of Mary. He became incarnate fulfilling the promise of your salvation. And so we offer you our praise with all your people on earth and in heaven. With the full chorus of your creation, we proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, Lord God, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, he didn't have pages to turn. <laughs> this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. 
He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Recalling his death and resurrection, and in obedience to his command, we celebrate the offering of his eternal sacrifice until he comes again. Through him, our priest and king, accept us as a living sacrifice, a people for your praise. Generous and holy God, pour out your spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Refashion us in your image that we may be found ready at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours, O Lord, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Happy are those who share the banquet. Please be seated. In the Methodist Church, it is our policy that anyone is welcome to receive bread and wine if they love or are looking for the love of God. So please, if you wish, um, the, the, um, the stewards will wait on you in your pew. Um, but if you don't wish to have the bread or the wine, then that's absolutely fine. Just, just tell them when they come with that. The true bread of heaven gives life to the world. Come, all who are hungry, come and eat. Come, all who are thirsty, come and drink.
Christ broken for you. Our God is faithful. Our God is loving. We eat this bread now to remember that faithfulness, to remember that love, and to thank God for all that he has done for us in Jesus. Amen. The blood of Christ was shed so that we might be whole. Let us drink this wine now in remembrance of God's love. Amen.
at the top of page 128 in your maroon books. We pray this prayer together. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for feeding us with the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Keep us in your grace, and at the coming of Christ in glory, bring us with your saints into the life of your kingdom. Amen. So we sing our final hymn, number 185. Sing we the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation his empire shall bring. Joy to the nations when Jesus is King. 185. <laughs> righteousness shine upon us and prepare our hearts and souls to meet him when he comes in glory and the blessing of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be ours now and always amen the day is surely coming be faithful in worship unwavering in hope fervent in the work of God's kingdom and all the more as you see the day is drawing near. Amen.
Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.